Okay, so welcome to uh, the first of Structures Meet the Writers uh, videos. This is uh, a short format uh, interview series in which we talk to authors and poets who have contributed their writing to Structo 20. And today we're talking to Stephanie Lim. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. So you're, uh, you're a poet and a writer of, of all different sorts. Um, you have a poem in the new issue. Um, so the, the standard, one of the standard questions I said, hey, we might ask you this is, what is the genesis of the piece? Um, which is maybe a little hard to say in before you've actually read the piece, but did, was there a specific spark that, that, uh, that began this, this piece? Yeah, um, so I was reading um, Arthur Kessler, The Sleepwalkers, um, A History of Man's Changing Vision of the Universe, um, wow. <laughs> which is basically, <laughs> it was like <laughs> a biography of Kepler, but with some extra bits on Newton and things in it. It's pretty long and hefty, but I was reading it on the beach um, with my two sons. And so it kind of got me thinking about... Um, the idea of all bits and um, and the kind of scary feeling of of those all bits kind of loosening off and and getting getting kind of further away and breaking away really so yeah so the I guess we should ex explain the poem is is Newton on sea and it's yes. yeah it it kind of ties together ideas of I don't know, um, celestial mechanics almost and and in a, in a hugely poetic very personal way about a uh, yeah a, a, almost a narrative way of two people you know trying to explain a relationship yeah um i think and there was a point where i was trying to explain um orbits in a really basic way to um i think my son was kind of four <laughs> so yeah <laughs> Um, and um, he obviously lost interest after about, <laughs> and um, then I was left thinking about it, and yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, I, I took for the basis of the questions today your the bio that you have in the back of the new issue, and it's it's quite uh, it's quite fertile ground for questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to do them in order. Uh, you're studying for a PhD at the moment. Can you say a little bit about that? Yeah, so I'm doing a creative critical PhD at um, Nottingham. And um, yeah, it's based on the figure of the monstrous mother. But um, I'm thinking more in terms of kind of monstrous, reclaiming the idea of monstrosity and um, and breaking it down into what um, what we mean by monstrosity. And, and yeah. That's and and that's at the in the creative writing department at, at Nottingham. Yes, it is. Yeah. So uh, my supervisor is a poet, mm -hmm. um, and I've got one critical supervisor as well. So yeah. Wow. Um, so will you be diving down into a, a creative part and a critical part? Is that is that how it works? Yes. Yeah, so um, usually the PhDs at Nottingham are um it's divided into a creative component and then your critical um which can be on a subject that's related to but it doesn't have to be reflective of what you've written um but I've kind of started and realized that the creative and critical are so intertwined that I can't see how I'm going to pass the, the two apart so I'm trying to get the um the administration to change the rules so I'm allowed to submit as one one creative critical piece. How, and how far through the PhD are you? I'm, um, oh gosh, I've lost sense of all time. <laughs> yeah, don't, that's a, that was a harsh question. <laughs> <laughs> started in February. Okay, so, so, yeah. so only if I'm really at the very beginning okay. um, at the moment. Yeah. But I've got funding from September. So ah, fantastic. That's, yeah. That's oh, great. that's great. It'll make a big difference. Yeah. Um, so you write, you write, if, if you're introducing yourself as a writer to someone, do you, do you call yourself a, a, a poet first or a, is, yeah. that, is that even a question? Yeah, I, as I've been trying to think about this a lot, actually. I think, I do think of myself as a poet, even though I've um, got something 
um, a book coming out in the autumn, which is prose. I mean, my first book and it's prose. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, um, and I think it's more, I do think I write in, in the kind of ly lyric essay form. Um, and I've been trying to kind of battle what the lyric essay means recently and whether it really is a, a thing. But I do think it is definitely a mode of writing, um, a way of kind of thinking um, critically, but also with that kind of lyric sensibility. So, yeah, I think of myself as a poet, I think. That's a really kind of helpful way of describing it, actually, if it has those, if it has the the mode of, of creativity, but also the, the the criticism in there. That's a really, yeah, it's quite, a, it's quite a nice way to describe it. So the book, tell, tell me a little bit about the book. This is something completely different. Yeah, so the book that's um, coming out with Broken Sleep in October is um, My Coleridge, which is a bit of a play on the um, Susan Howe, my, my Emily Dickinson. But My Coleridge isn't Samuel Taylor, it's his daughter, Sarah. So it's kind of a trick as well, <laughs> because <laughs> getting a book on S.T. Coleridge and then they'll open it and it's all about his daughter. So yeah. what's, on the, what's on the cover? It's very plain and it's just my <laughs> code rich. So. Perfect. <laughs> so it is just a, a con. Yeah. So the book is um is, is about uh about Sarah Coleridge? Yes, it's about Sarah. So um she was really fascinating. Um and she um she was his first editor, his her father's first editor, and she basically I think made him um one of the big six because when he died he was he was kind of a bit of a figure of fun he was um just seen as a, a hopeless addict and a minor poet and she really worked at building up his reputation um but she also staked a lot of her kind of reputation on him as well and it was she had a tricky relationship with him and and with um and with opium herself and yeah it's it's She's just fascinating. So it's um, kind of a few poems by her and then um, my kind of reading of those poems, but bringing in kind of my own um, experiences as well. So, yeah. uh, it, sound, it sounds really fascinating. Um, I could talk to you all day, um, but uh, this is supposed to be a short interview series. <laughs> so um, you, you kindly offered to, to read a little bit of, uh, or as much as you like of, uh, of the poem that's in the new issue. So um, I'll say goodbye and let's, let's finish up with that. Thank you. Okay. So Newton on sea. He wants me to explain tides. The sand refracts heat that cuts my toes. I sweep away the dry sand, turning a page to find a place where seawater damps. I draw a circle with my hand, then moon's orbit, like an eye. Mass attracts mass. The moon pulls, holds. In each corner, the seas bulge. The sun pulls him to the cold water. I'm towed along, shedding clothes, braving his laughs at the gasp of each wave. Tugged by the current, far north of our towels, I drag his body down the beach, fighting the gravity suck of the shallows until I relent. We lie like pebbles, letting the surf wash the planet under us. Perfect, thank you. Well, well, I'll cut it. I'll cut it at that point. That's absolutely spot on. It's a, it's a nice way to end it. It's also really nice to hear it. I didn't realise that you um you were from the north. I'm also I'm from Cumbria, and it, it uh, works so much better in in a in a, in a northern accent. <laughs> yeah. It's I think it's the word. There's a few words in there that work so much better. Suck is one of them. Uh, which one? I'm just looking through. Uh, toad, toad along. Oh, that's really nice, because you know when you you if you read poetry, do you read poetry in your own accent? Does that does that make sense? Um, I think I do because I read a lot aloud these days. Ah, okay. My younger son um is a bugger at going to bed, and so I tend to <laughs> just read whatever I'm reading. Ah, nice. That's a good idea. Sleep. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, me and it it shuts him up because he it just washes over him and he goes to sleep. So nice. yeah, I do tend to. Um, and I think I tend to read poetry in my own accent, yeah. Oh, that's cool, because I, 
I yeah, I'd say I'm I'm from Cumbria, and my my accent only comes out because I've been away for so long. It comes out only occasionally, but it's interesting that I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the poem. It comes out very very specifically in ways that really make sense for the piece, which is really nice. Cool. Oh, that's really great. Yeah, so thanks again for for doing this. Uh, no it's much appreciated, and thanks for bearing with the doorbell. <laughs> Yeah, they were quite loud in the other room for a moment, and now it's gone all Oh, quiet. no, that's kind of nice. That's, I actually kind of like that, to be honest. It's, the whole point of this is, you know, everyone's in the same, the same situation. So, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, listen, I'll let you go. Thanks very much. Um, Lovely to speak to you. Yeah, we're heading to print uh, kind of next week, so um, updates to come. <laughs> and, yeah, um, this, the, the idea is to kind of release these. We have about seven or eight people so far who have signed up. Um, to do the to do the little interviews, um, so um, we'll kind of space them out as the issue comes out, um, oh, and I'll give you a shout obviously, and we'll keep you in the loop. Okay, thanks. Brilliant. Yeah, nice to talk to you. Cheerio. Bye. Bye.